Hi, I'm Andrew Watson. Thanks for tuning in to my weekly guitar video blog. It's Saturday, March 12th, 2011. And what's happening today with this uh, very short video that I plan on putting together is I just wanted to answer a uh, popular question that I get sent in here quite often by folks. And it just has to do with what do you take with you if you're just traveling light and you're going to play a basic bar gig. Now I'll tell you the scenario, it's just a matter of hours ago, I got a call from a friend of mine who runs a top 40 band. He needs me to do a substitution gig for him tonight. And uh, basically what I'm gonna be doing is just walking in cold and learning the songs as they're playing them on stage. I'm actually filling in for a horn player, so I'm gonna play a lot of lines. I'm not really going to be doing a lot of rhythm guitar. I'll be doing a lot of filler stuff. So all I need to know in these tunes is what the key center is and what the section changes are if there perhaps happens to be maybe uh, uh, some type of modulation or something to the song. So it's a pretty easy gig and I'm just going to pack real light and I thought this would be a great opportunity to show folks out there what it is that I'll take with me on just a real basic sort of substitute players gig, something that, uh, you know, you just basically the bare essentials of what you need on the gig. And I'm going to go through that in the video and hopefully give you a good idea of, uh, probably surprisingly to a lot of people, how little equipment that you actually do need. So let's hit the table that I set up behind me and we're just going to run through some of the gear right now. Okay, tonight in my uh, town here, it is a blizzard. We got bad weather. I want to travel light. I know the club I'm playing at. All I'm taking is my foot controller pedal, uh, the effects pedal in the bag on the left, my main guitar, the Fender Stratocaster in that bag right there, and this PV Bandit 112. And you know, I'm going to be downtown. I'm going to be on a busy street. I don't want to be unloading a whole bunch of stuff. And then at the end of the night, if this blizzard that's uh, coming our way is going to get pretty bad, I don't want to have to be loading up a bunch of gear at 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the morning uh, on some street in the, you know, downtown in the middle of a blizzard. Now, another thing is I happen to know the stage and it's small and we have a five-piece band tonight. So that, that's one of the reasons why the PV Bandit is going to be incredible because it's a great amp, it's got lots of power. I know that we're going to have a sound man, he's going to be miking us, so he's probably going to stick a Shure SM57 up against this PV Bandit. It's going to give plenty of uh, jam so he can uh, fill up the room with my guitar sound and uh, should be able to cover things just perfectly. So uh, let's crack open the cases of the guitar and the effects pedal and uh, talk about them real quick. So let's start with the guitar gig bag here and what's going on in here. In the top pouch, I've got uh, spare guitar strings in this one, in the gauge that uh, I need for this particular guitar. So you never know when you could bust a string on stage, so you want to have spare strings in the proper gauge that your guitar is strung to. If we go over to the lower pouch on the bag, now it's got these straps, not a huge fan of these types of straps. I'd much rather have Velcro. It's my preferred closure device on gig bags and cases. This is my, it's an old pencil case, but this is actually my guitar repair kit, my mobile kit. I got my side cutters and string winder, that kind of stuff in there. Um, spare guitar strap, vital thing to have in your gig bag, by the way, because you never know. I, I learned my lesson after one time, I forgot a guitar strap at one gig that I had in the same day and then went to another gig same day and I had no guitar strap, had to sit on uh, a bar stool, kind of sucked. So always have a spare guitar strap. Patch cords, of course, other sets of strings. This is sort of a random pack of strings. And uh, that's about it. Some tools at the bottom there, just in case uh, I need something specific for the guitar in the caser, which happens to be Stratocaster. But uh, let's um, quickly open up the gig bag and show you what I got in here. This is the uh, area, of course, where I'm keeping not only the guitar, but I always keep my uh, shoulder strap, my guitar strap in here as well. And um, always just make sure before a gig that the guitar is uh, set up nice. If I have any intonation problem or buzzing problems, I tend to try and take care of those quickly before I leave the house. Hopefully uh, anything that's wrong with the guitar is just simply minor repairs that you can do quickly. Uh, never hurts either uh, every couple of weeks to pop a new set of strings on. My strings get really dirty because uh, 
you know, a lot of times you're in a rush to set yourself up on your stage and then go to work and just start playing. So you seldom have time to wash your hands before you start playing. So that means all the dirt from the stage, patch cords, uh, moving equipment around and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, it transfers right off your fingers, right to the guitar strings. So uh, I prefer to have new strings on my guitar uh, at least every two weeks. Now let's go to the effects pedal. Now when it comes to the effects pedal, let's just quickly talk about a, a bag that you might want to try and pick up for your effects pedal. I wouldn't suggest uh, carrying it around loose. Um, this happens to be a small keyboard bag. It's from the Levy's Leather Corporation. It's about 38 bucks, I believe. And uh, any music store or uh, musical instrument bag supplier should be able to you know, set you up with something comparable. Um, in the top pouch here and again it is velcro my favorite closure device so uh, in there I've got the power supply and inside we've got this zoom G9 2TT excellent pedal I've used this thing for ages now I've had it for several years it's really stood up to the test of time uh, it's got two 12AX7 tubes in it. Uh, it's got the volume pedal. Really like that feature, of course. And uh, the wah-wah pedal on the other side. So um, it's also got a built-in tuner. Really easy to see screen. I know this thing is filthy because it's been uh, <clears throat> in heavy use, obviously, for a long time. But uh, no complaints about it. And uh, anything that's goofy about it is... Uh, goofy because somebody has uh, spilt a beer or some kind of a tequila shooter or something on it. So Zoom Corporation, I uh, got to give them a real thumbs up to this machine. It's fantastic. It does absolutely everything I need it to do all in one pedal and all in a really rugged, solid metal casing. Uh, it's a bit heavy, but it, that doesn't matter because it functions 100% for what I need it. And it's only got one basic power supply. I have heard of guys who also, like me, have been using the snot out of these zoom pedals that they've had to buy a new power supply. Uh, mine, I've been lucky. It works great. So um, there you go. Everything's all housed between my guitar bag, this gig bag here for the um, foot controller pedal, and you know the only other thing is the amp. But I just want to show you something in the back of the amp really uh, quickly that uh, I think is really important. So let's go to that next and then we'll wrap it up. All right, like I said, just a couple of things I want to cover in the back side of the amp. The first thing being something that you may not have thought of. I don't know why I never thought of it any sooner in my career, but this spray painted black 2x4. You're probably wondering what on earth do you have that in the back of your amp for? Well, you know, one of the problems that you'll have sometimes on most stages is the sound from your speaker is just going to be shooting right at your knees, which isn't all that great. So what this turns out being really helpful for is you just slide it underneath your amp as far in as you'd like to tilt the amp back and now the volume from the speaker is shooting out a little bit upwards there and you can hear your amp a lot better. Especially on certain stages where you maybe have really poor uh, stage monitors or a stage monitor situation where you have very few stage monitors which of course you know you're going to want to have your singer to be able to hear himself properly or herself properly and they're going to be using the bulk of those monitors maybe there's not going to be one left over for you to hear your guitar sound so that's why the spray painted black 2x4 works fantastic all you do is slide it underneath your amp tilts the amp back and you can hear your amp a lot better at the gig now a couple other things here cable ties uh, they not only make your cables neat and tidy, but it actually saves the life of the cable itself. It took me a little bit of time to realize that. I'll demonstrate this more with my uh, small uh, amp foot controller here. What I used to do with foot controller boxes from the amp is I used to take the cable and wrap it around the box. So it was going around the foot controller box itself. What happened though with that is that there was a serious kink, I guess, at the side where the cable came out of the box. And over the course of maybe 10 months or so, I developed a short. And if you know very much about most of how the circuitry for these uh, stomp box things work that come with the amp, 
you kind of need this thing with you when you're doing a gig if you want to go through the different channels of the amp. Otherwise, you're in a lot of trouble because, you know, for a song, you don't want to have to be walking back to the amp to switch it from one channel to the other. So you kind of need this thing <laughs> and you don't want to have the cable from it going and shorting out on you. So basically, uh, just get some cable ties. You can pick those up at pretty much uh, most every uh, one of your electronics stores. Most of the music stores out there will have them. It's a lifesaver for the cables of those foot controllers and for power cables and pretty much every cable that you'll use with all your gear. But uh, basically, that's about it. Um, thanks for watching. I have to take off and do this gig. You can uh, see here that you don't need a lot of equipment with you. You can travel fairly light for most of these club gigs and get away with, uh, like you've seen, just uh, two bags, your guitar, your effects pedal, your amp, and you're good to go and uh, hopefully you have a good gig. It's especially helpful when you have bad weather like I got to deal with uh, tonight. So wish me luck. <laughs> but anyway, take care. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now.